night to all, wherever you're tuning in, whenever you're tuning in. Bill Donahue here for the Way of Wonder. We are journeying deeper into beauty, and I'm here with a man who owns an actual sword, is an accomplished martial artist, and speaks seven languages. Two of those things are true. Welcome, Father Patrick Schultz. Thanks, Bill. Yeah, we should have people guess in the show notes which of those is true. I know, but they're gonna. Mm. But I, we want to know now, though. Mm. Which is not true? Which one's not true? I do not speak seven languages, but there I am it is. an accomplished martial artist, and I do <laughs> own a sword. That's right. Heck See, yeah, I do. Fun facts with Father mm-hmm. Pat. Mm-hmm. So, welcome to another episode of The Way of Wonder. I'm so pumped to dive in. Uh, how are you doing today, Father Pat? I'm good, man. I am good. Winter has finally arrived to the Diocese of Cleveland. It was like, like <laughs> so nice. Like for so, it was like November 9th, and we're like, I'm wearing shorts and a t-shirt. And yeah. then it was like winter. Yeah, so, we had a similar it's, experience. It's great. You know, the change of the seasons. Yeah, we had a long. Uh, I was telling Thomas, I think, right a couple maybe a week ago, just walking up to lunch here uh, at the Institute headquarters. Um, that this fall has been glorious, like I've never seen. It's stretched on and on. The colors have been brilliant. Literally the best fall I think I've ever seen. Everyone has been saying that, and I love it, that. It, it's it not was, just like you and I who are like fall freaks. Like, yeah, right, right. Everyone's like the colors, the and apparently it is true, something about the, the amount of rainfall we had in the, yeah. in the summer. T- I don't know. Somehow people think it's like actually true, that it was different than what it normally is. I think it's true, yeah. But now here come the barren branches of winter, which yeah. uh, has its own charm. It has stirs, some beauty. It, it stirs the uh, the nostalgia, the zainzucht, the oh, longing. So, <clears throat> speaking of death. Oh, boy. <laughs> we are also, uh, you know, those who are tuning in for this episode, it shall be landing in the final week of the liturgical year. So... We drop on Tuesdays. Uh, Christ the King is the was Sunday Mass just passed as this episode drops, which concludes the liturgical year. And the readings, as you well know, my dear mm-hmm. sacerdote, are filled with apocalyptic imagery, and it's woo. So I'm gonna I'm gonna share a quote, and then I'll drop my painting. They connect, obviously. Okay. And it's about you know, in a way, it's about the four last things. The four last things. So, Father Pat, what are the four last things? Put you on the spot. Death, judgment, heaven, hell. Dun, dun. Okay, so thanks for joining us for this cheerful episode, everyone. Um, we hope that you're not in a bad mood or feeling sad, but uh, we're going to dive in. Our quote for this episode comes from an artist, possibly one of the greatest artists of Western civilization, Michelangelo Buonarroti. Of course, he's the, well, he worked in the 15th century and died in the 16th century. This is a poem near the end of his life called On the Brink of Death. Okay. Now hath my life across a stormy sea, like a frail bark reached that wide port where all are bidden. Ere the final reckoning fall of good and evil for eternity. I'm going to jump ahead to the end of the piece he wrote. Painting nor sculpture now can lull to rest my soul that turns to his great love on high, whose arms to clasp us on the cross were spread. Michelangelo. Michelangelo Buonarroti. Yeah, that is so good. <laughs> the uh, I've I've heard this quote. So when I studied in Rome, when I lived in Rome in 2010, I took a class on Michelangelo. Oh wow! Um, and uh, the way that I heard it translated then was neither painting nor sculpture can any longer quiet my soul. Yes, this is an interesting twist to this. Have, have you heard it translated that way? Yes, yes. This one I got, um, and I don't actually like because it loses that. It, it almost obfuscates it. So yeah, the original I read was what you just heard. What you just read mm-hmm. said is that it's not enough. I want more, right? I want yeah. more. I was sort of tracing the outlines of his glory, but now I'm going to see him face to face. Yeah. Yeah. 
the uh, it's like his own non nisite domine moment of like Thomas Aquinas, right? When he gets oh, the wow. end of his career and he he's writing that treatise on the Eucharist. Yeah. And uh, he has that experience of glory and he's like, everything I've written is straw. Um, mm. What would you have of me, Thomas? You've written well of me concerning the sacrament of my body and blood. Non nisite domine. Nothing but you. Nothing if not you, Lord. Right. Amazing. That. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, what I think is really powerful about Michelangelo here that like you, you said 88 years old is when he's he's writing this at the yeah. end of his life. Mm hmm. So he did the Pieta when he was 24. Yeah. 24. Right? Mm hmm. 24. Oh, OK. See, I remember when I turned 24, I had an existential crisis of thinking, I've not accomplished anything in my life. <laughs> oh, my gosh. What about you? Done? Look at, you look at his you look at his early work, right? You see the Pieta at 24. It's very I mean, it's stunning masterpiece of Western civilization. But it's so um, defined, right? It's so well defined. But you look oh, yeah. at the Pieta that he does at the very end of his life. Mm -hmm. It's it's so it, it you would think that the one that he did at the end of his life was the one that he did at the beginning. And the one that he did at the beginning, you would think that was the one that he did at the end. Yeah, that's true. Because right? the one at the end is so ill-defined. And it's mm -hmm. like, it, you almost get the sense that he's he's just like, I can't do this. It just doesn't even capture it. Like, there's this sense of, this isn't enough for me. Mm. Like, capturing beauty in stone, it's not even enough for me. There's There's so much more. Like, you can almost hear him saying what Thomas Aquinas said, that yeah. everything I've sculpted is straw. What's the what's the point? What's the I point? I love it. I love that you just connected Thomas Aquinas to, to Michelangelo. I think that's brilliant because they're both artists in their own right, right? One with the word and the intellect mm. and the other with his hands and his heart forming these great sculptures and yeah. paintings. But it's the same concept of the Lord inspiring me and then me expressing what has moved me. And but it's still it's just uh, it feels like scribblings, you know, at the end of the day yeah. compared to the glory. Mm, oh yeah, that, I, I love that you uh, you were talking about Michelangelo's Pietas because you might think that that's the image I'm going to share with you, but it is not. It, it is, is not. not. No. So we're gonna that's maybe for another episode. <laughs> that's right. We should totally do that for another episode. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought of the quote though because you know again, Christ the King, end of the liturgical year, apocalyptic, uh, the seasons. You know, for certain parts of the world, right? The seasons are now bleak. Right. Winter's on. Um, it's a kind of sleep of death. So this concept of um, of Michelangelo saying, my frail bark, this little ship of my life has mm. reached that wide port. Uh, it conjures up those four last things of, you know, death, judgment, heaven, and hell. So we're going to dive into a, um, I think it's 15th century. So actually a little bit before, you know, less than a century before Michelangelo, we're going to look at Hans Memling, one of these epic Flemish painters who were masters Whoa. of oil, and it's the Last Judgment. Check it out, Father Pat. We're gonna do a I, lot of zooms. We're gonna do a lot of zoom ins need, on yeah, this I, one. Yeah, <laughs> I need some zooming. There's will, just will. so much going on there. It is a cacophony slash symphony of grace and sin and beauty and horror and oh man. So Hans Memling, wow. about 550 years ago, painted this. We will zoom in quite a bit, and we'll, Thomas is going to take us on a guided tour all over the painting. It is 10 feet wide, 7 feet tall. It's massive, and I believe it's in Dansk, Dansk which is in Poland. It's in a museum in Poland, I believe. And this thing, in 550 years, has traveled quite a bit. It's been all over um, it was captured at sea, and it was in uh, one location. During World War II, the Nazis uh, stuck it in a church, tried to hide it. There was this whole art heist of the Nazi parties, and it, it was reclaimed again. It hasn't been damaged in five centuries with all the travels and all the, you know, <laughs> the loss and the found again. So an epic work by a great Flemish master, Hans Memling. And we'll start zooming in. You're going to see... Some figures I'm sure you'll know. Uh, in the center here, we have, of course, Christ, Christ robed in glory up above in the top half. 
Is he sitting? Is he sitting on the rainbow? He is sitting on the rainbow. The rainbow has been reclaimed and redeemed here now, <laughs> right? The rainbow Love in scripture that. being that um, that covenant, and the rainbow kind of, you know, it's kind of separating the celestial realm from the earthly, yeah. and of course, center. Who's that character in the center there, Father Pat? You make it out. I'm, I'm guessing that's St. Michael. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he's got yeah. scales of justice. So in the scales, oh, yeah. we have a saintly figure, folded hands, and he's got the weight of glory, hence the scales are dropping low. He's uh, heading oh, to yeah. uh, bliss. The other guy, not faring so well. So we have... It's like that, uh, uh, that line in, uh, what's the, the scene in the Old Testament where the hand appears on the wall... Ooh, and the yeah. king and the, the words, you've been weighed in the scales and you've been found wanting. Yes, yes, yes. So, yeah. ooh, chilling. And St. Michael, of course, yeah. has this massive scepter and he's holding the scales. And the scepter is kind of poking at the guy's abdomen there. <laughs> so we've got yeah. figures on the right, our right, who are writhing in pain. And then we've got figures on the left that we'll, we'll take a little look at later who are... Um, awakening from the earth and their slumber of death and, mm. and entering into Oh, bliss. look at that. I didn't even notice that. They're coming up out of the ground. Yes, they are. So this is a a wild painting. This is a wild work. Uh, it's oil on wood. It's a, basically a triptych that could go above an altar. And yeah, your eye can get lost. I mean, the details are everywhere. It's so expressive. And these Flemish masters like Hans Memling, Roger van der Weyden. Roger van der Weyden's one of my favorites. I think he actually mentored Hans Memling. These guys mastered mm. oil. Oil paints, uh, they, they just mastered the craft and could capture so much in expressions and in faces. And boy, they're, they're going to town with it in this image. So it's a sobering picture. Maybe, Thomas, we can move a little bit more in detail around it uh, as you choose. And then we'll just kind of let Father Pat react to uh, to this. Okay. Ooh, well, oh, this go. is this is the horror of yes. of the damned. Mm. Do we have any further zoom zoom ins on this one on this side? Let's see if Thomas closer. can work his magic. Oof. Oh, good job, Thomas. Oh man, yeesh. <laughs> and that's the reaction we want. I mean, I'm kind of laughing here, but yeah, it's real. It's real. This is the thing about that, the season. Is that one? Oh, go ahead. No, you go, you go. The one guy who's got his hands like this, mm -hmm. he, with the, I don't know if that's a shadow or if that's like a, like a monk haircut. Is that like a monk, like a brother? Yeah, I think it may be. And you know, it's interesting. Dante, was it 13th century? Dante, the great poet, uh, yeah. had a lot of bishops, cardinals, religious that were in hell. I mean, it's not a it's not a um, get out of jail free card, right? It's not an instant no, pass. Absolutely not. Yeah, we've got some. Uh, nightmarish figures here we hope you're not viewing this video at 11 p.m and you live in a dark farmhouse somewhere everyone and you turn your lights off after uh, this video and you go to bed <laughs> but the thing is look at that yeah, yeah wow it, it, it we have to wake up to the fact that justice is real and you can't yeah you gotta live a good life of self-donative love and thinking of others more than yourself Scripture is very clear. Jesus is very clear about the reality of hell. So that's what the season's about, post Christ the King. This is the reality. Yeah, I think that. Oh, geez. Yeah, let's just keep going. I, I, I want, yeah, I want no, to see the good let's, side. Let, 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 <laughs> do you? Do you? Let's keep moving around, Thomas, and we'll get um, give our viewers and give Father oh. Pat a good look. Yeah, here we go. Now these are the ones on the left panel. I love that everybody's just. Stark naked. I just love it. Yeah. Just in the end, okay, we're, so I've got, this is it. Yeah. I've got my thoughts on that. What are, what are your thoughts on that? You can't tell who's rich or poor. You mm. can't tell. There's no status. There's no, like, check out my, my cool badge. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we're all, we came into the world naked. We leave the world naked. And we rise again naked. And then there's the final clothing so to speak, of wh what our personality became, what we blossomed into. And it's either, in C.S. Lewis's words, everlasting splendors or immortal horrors, right? Our life yeah. becomes that. It's hard, to, it's hard to read the scriptures and not notice the themes of nakedness and clothing. Mm. I mean, for, from the very beginning, mm -hmm. I mean, this is one of the greatest insights of JP2 that um, 
the nakedness without shame is that like that's the boundary experience between original man and historical man mm. the um you know we we sons and daughters of adam and eve ever since the fall we are just so obsessed with covering ourselves we are. just so i mean the enemy has one play and he just convinces us of it over and over again that in the wake of sin in the wake of our our shame he he offers the the solution where he says hide it hide yeah. it right right and so we cover we cover our bodies we cover our hearts and i think the the great mm. like the a way to summarize the spiritual life is is come out from hiding right and um I mean, look at the, mm. look at the Christ, right? He, he enters he enters the world naked. He emerges from the womb of his mother naked, like all of us, right? Um, naked on the cross. I think that's one of the things that that mm. I would venture to guess most Christians don't even know that that he was crucified naked. That's right. There was no there was no little loincloth to provide any sort of dignity. Um, mm. mm -hmm. Crucified naked, buried emerging from the tomb, leaving the burial bands behind naked, right? Mm. The resurrected Christ is naked. Uh, I mean, because we stand before him in our nakedness, right? What, right. We, what we've become in this life, like what is, back to your, your Michelangelo quote, um, uh, the reckoning, the final reckoning of mm. good and evil for eternity, like what we've become in this life will be fully exposed. Right. Like when you stand before him, there's there's no well i always intended to um mm -hmm. i meant what i meant by that was um no the, like, there's no hiding everything is exposed mm. all all of it is exposed everything horrible and everything glorious that no one ever knew but god alone it's all exposed. that's right that's right it's, a, it's yeah. thank you for that and it's it, it's a so it's such a sobering thought but it's such an essential thought because we have to get rid of all the masks and all the fear and be revealed. I mean, that's why the last book of scripture is the revelation, right? We, mm -hmm. everything has to be revealed. And, you know, you, here you are in uh, Wadsworth, Ohio, and here we are in Southeastern Pennsylvania, where we've got winter. Now the trees are undressed. The, the leaves have fallen off. We've got bare branches against a bleak, cloudy sky, a cold wintry sky. So even nature for us is, is echoing this truth, right? To be stripped. And once we let go yeah. of all those things, then, you know, after a time we're born again and life is going to flourish again. Uh, I, I just love the parallels between the, those two worlds. Yeah. Who Thomas, do we have any more, yeah. uh, zooms, little zooms? There's just so much to see here. Oh yeah. I love this. Section. Whoa. This is the top left corner of the piece. So this is the image of, uh, heaven. And the blessed, and what what Hans Memley did is he has him coming into essentially like a Gothic cathedral. Cathedral, yeah. And on the top, That's if awesome. you can make it out, you've got angels who are playing instruments. Okay, so there's all manner of different musical instruments they're playing. So it's it's just a party, it's a celebration, and uh, the detail is absolutely stunning. Again, it's it's oil on wood, but he gives this faux impression of a of a of a stone cathedral and all the intricate carvings. If you can see in that triangular piece of the arch, there's a, a mm -hmm. medallion, so to speak. And that's the creation of Eve. You've got Eve coming forth from the side of Adam, which is awesome to put right above the portal into paradise, right? Where the two uh, are formed in the image of God, man and woman. And there's just a bazillion other things you could zoom in on, but wow. And, and, I mean, this might be totally incidental, but I, I think the fact that that, you know, the the masculine, feminine, the the iconography of, of mm -hmm. the human family right there in the center of the triangle, which is, mm. you know, we we when I teach about the Trinity, I like you draw the triangle on the board, right? Mm -hmm. That that they like the, the earthly image of the heavenly reality. Um, mm. Ah, that's awesome. That is so <laughs> awesome, and just theologically, it's beautifully true, right? That the right to enter into the church you are entering into heaven that's what we talked about i think whatever episode of whatever it was previous that when we talked yeah. about the the westminster cathedral westminster abbey mm -hmm. to step into this space is to step into 
so, like a heavenly space. That's what our churches are meant to be. They're meant to transport us. Awesome. And what's cool about that that insight too is that this entry point is is personal and surrounded by persons. You've got angelic persons. You've got human persons entering in to this communion with the divine persons. Like you said, the triangle and the man and the woman, the creation of Eve, and there's Adam. That is the Imago Dei. That is the image of God. We're, we're meant to be this communion of persons. So it just, it feels right. It is right. Then you, when you pan out and look at the other side of this panel and you see the damned, you see, comp oh. you don't see a, a, a sort of common ascent. You know, you don't see the mass of humanity in orderly fashion rising up. You see cascading, chaotic, tumbled bodies that don't have communion, right? That don't have all that festal joy and that song. You just have utter chaos. That's what sin takes you to, utter chaos. It, also, like, it looks like, uh, remember the game Jacks? Where you like bounce the ball and grab the Jacks? It, they yes. look, like, it just looks like a, mm. just a tossed pile of Jacks. Right. Just yeah, chaos, chaos. Look at that one figure with like the brandishing the sword. He's like all shadow. Mm hmm. Yep. You see that in front yeah. of the flame? Oh, yep. man. Yeah, there's nightmarish figures in here. Uh, when you have a chance to zoom in after maybe the episode, you'll see there's one that is covered in hair. It's, it's like this Chewbacca looking demon. It's very dark, grotesque features. Uh, and this is the wild imagination, too, of this uh, school of these Flemish masters. You know, Hieronymus Bausch is another one, Roger van der Weyden. Um, and of course, this is Hans Memling. But, uh, they're, they're using that amazing sacramental imagination to just uh, to picture the whole drama, you know, so they're, they're not afraid to go in there, right, to talk about like what what mm -hmm. what the horrors of sin can do. It's grotesque. It disfigures us. And I think when we talk about heaven, hell, you know, death and judgment, the whole point is not to like creep ourselves out, but to wake ourselves up. Right. Yeah. It's, you know, the whole point yeah. of the teaching of hell is not to instill, you know, rule by fear. It's like, no, if you follow a path of selfishness and greed, if all you think about is yourself, in the end, that's all you're going to have. And it's a yeah. withered, it's a withered self. It's the pale wisp of a thing compared to the glory that you could be if you enter into life. I think it was mm. Catherine of Siena who said that for those who are on their way to heaven, heaven starts now. And, and conversely, mm -hmm. those on the way to hell, hell starts now. Yeah. Um, like none of those people in that right panel there, the hell panel. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't think I don't think it works this way that like upon your death, you're like, wait, I'm in hell. <laughs> like, like no, you were choosing hell all along. Right. Like you're not surprised. Right. Mm. This is hell is hell is hell is the doctrine that that flows from those two other doctrines, one that we are free. Mm. Right. And that like God gives us eternity what we want, um, that the if we spend our life, like you said, choosing self, um, pushing God out, saying to the Lord, saying to every invitation, no, I don't mm. want you. I don't want this. Then then that becomes our life and you close your eyes. You're like, Oh yeah, I know this place. It's utter isolation. Ugh. That's one of the things, you know, I, when I talk, I mean, talk, there's, there's a, there's plenty of reasons why he depicted it this way. But when I imagine hell, right, if heaven is co the communion of saints, if mm -hmm. it's communion, hell would be utter isolation. Yeah. Just utterly alone forever getting mm. forever ang like angrier at God and at yourself. Um, and it's self, it's, yeah. we do it to ourselves. I mean, that's the thing. God doesn't throw you into hell, you know, like this is grave injustice was done. It's not my fault. No, you've been building it all along. Um, right. What you just said is getting me thinking here, the communion of saints. So conversely, hell is the disunion of sinners, right? Who, mm. So it's almost like magnets who are not turned. I don't, I, don't, I don't know magnets, but the whole polarity thing, right? If they're turned the right way, they're drawn to each other. Right. And they, they form a communion. If they're not, they cannot be drawn together. They constantly yeah. repel from each other and are repulsed by each other. Ooh. All right. Oh, man. 
Let's pan out Thomas to the full seven foot by 10 foot triptych. I got to make oh, a man, pilgrimage so to big. pull it. Yeah, it's massive. That's really amazing that it was, it was, uh, I mean, the history that it was, there was never any damage to it. Yeah, it's like, remarkable. All along. Yeah, remarkable. I mean, you again, said, what did you say about the Nazis? They, the Nazis took it at one they point? Tried to, they tried to, yeah, they had robbed it. They had taken a bunch of, of art and kept it. In fact, it was a great movie. Um, there's a George Monuments Clooney. Men. Monuments Men, that's it. It chronicles, because yeah. uh, there's another great work by Roger van der Weyden, um, his Descent of the Cross, I think, deposition that was captured by the Nazis. But this was, yeah, this was in their hands for a bit, and they hid it in a church somewhere, uh, but it was reclaimed, thank God. No. Yeah. <clears throat> but, um, okay. So, post Christ the King, end of the liturgical year, death, judgment, heaven, and hell. Do we have any actio now? Or what are we going to do with this art? What's this art going to do to our heart? How can we change? I think, I think it's good for any Christian, for every Christian to occasionally, if not every day, this is like a kind of memento mori spirituality, but to like, to contemplate a last judgment mm. piece, whether it's this one, whether it's Michelangelo's in the Sistine Chapel, there's a mm. lot of them. There are. Um, but to realize that like, what's in Matthew 25, the separation of the sheep and the goats. Yeah. Like that's a, that's a real event that's going to happen. Mm. There will be a real sifting, right? The Lord is just so clear on that over and over and over again. Right. Um, the good go here, the evil go there. Mm. Um, like it, it's, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. So yes. how about the Axio is, uh, I don't know, I'm looking for a new, uh, <laughs> I was looking for new backgrounds on my phone. I like the center panel. Maybe I'll do the left <laughs> panel, the, uh, the heaven <laughs> panel. Put that as yeah. my, my wallpaper on my phone. There you go. This is, this is where you want to go. Yeah, I love that. You're putting your that that's something you're gonna look at a bunch of times during the day, right? So that'll uh -huh. be an invitation to it. Well, I love what you said. I would I would echo that um that memento mori, that great Latin phrase, remember death. Uh and I'll add to it with another Latin phrase, ars moriendi, which is the art of dying. So mm. this is a kind of school that was uh written about and built up in the thirteenth and fourteenth centuries. You know, this painting's like fourteenth century or fifteenth century. So ours moriendi is, how do I prepare for death? Um, so my axio would be, uh, echoing yours, right? Keep this sobering thought before you that there is an end. And if it's, the end is going to be communion of, uh, of the saints, then let's remember our C.S. Lewis. I, I quoted it earlier, but C.S. Lewis saying, all day long we're helping one another to either one of these ends to everlasting splendors or eternal horrors. And he has a great line. I think this is the end of the weight of glory, right? Where he says, uh, next to the blessed sacrament itself, your neighbor is the holiest object presented to your senses. Boom. Yeah. So moving out into our day, um, next person we see, let's pray. Let's pray if we can form some kind of relationship, even if it's just a quiet prayer for the person we're looking at. Or talking yeah. to that, I hope we ascend left side of the painting into that communion yeah, God. and not descend into utter chaos. So just the chance to see everybody as a as a holy, a holy one that we hopefully will be a part yeah. of. Yeah. Oh man. Yep. Whew. All right. Good one. Love this stuff. Oh, by the way, as we close off our episode, uh, I don't think I told you this yet. I just did it this morning. I went back, went back on Instagram after a almost three-year hiatus, and I've created Way of Wonder on Instagram. Whoa. So what I want to do is start loading up the uh, episodes we've done, all the works of art that we've looked at so far with a little quick sketch about it, and maybe start building up some people following that and, and tuning in. So it's Way of Wonder. That's the handle. But the O is the, is the number zero because other ways of wonder were taken. So... Go on Instagram, look up Way of Wonder. The O is a, an of is a zero. And we'll just start building out and sharing um, what we're doing each week. All right, that's, thanks, Father nice. Pat, for tuning in again. And thanks for uh, giving us some great insights on Hans Memling's Last Judgment. I'm looking forward to next week's episode where uh, I will be seeing something that you're going to throw at me. <laughs>